and you put creatine into hot drinks, tea, coffee. Hear it a lot. Here's the thing, creatine does actually get degraded at higher temperatures. That's why raw meat has a higher creatine content than cooked meat. Now, this is why I always recommend taking creatine with cold drinks. So you can take it with some water, you can take it with some juice, you can take it with a protein shake. If you want, you can dry scoop it and immediately follow it off with some water. Um, but I don't recommend putting it into hot drinks. If you need to, you can. You're not going to lose all the benefits, but some of it will be broken down in the higher temperature. So worth bearing in mind. If you're finally getting into tracking your food intake, you've heard about macros. That's short for macronutrients. And commonly there are three, but there's actually four. So we'll talk about them. So macronutrients is used because we get them in high amounts, usually in gram quantities. So the first macronutrient we'll talk about, carbohydrates. Carbohydrates have four calories per gram, great source of energy. Certain carbohydrates like fiber can be really, really beneficial for gut health. Next macronutrient, protein. Again, four calories per gram, essential for building muscle, for building uh, hormones, for building a lot of signaling, signaling molecules in your body, essential if you want to get big and strong in the gym. And then finally, we've got fat, which has nine calories per gram. It's the most energy dense uh, macronutrient we have really really important for hormone production in the body and then the actual last one is alcohol which has seven calories per gram but none of you guys drink that anyway right this is a question i hear from a lot of young gym goers does creatine stunt growth and here's the thing there's absolutely no scientific evidence to suggest that creatine does that it doesn't stunt growth in fact we have a lot of evidence from really young kids who have a genetic condition that causes a deficiency in creatine metabolism that means that they need to supplement with creatine in really really high doses from a really young age for a long period of time so we've got evidence of these kids taking up to 30 grams of creatine a day that's a lot more than the five gram most people take uh, for a period of five years, and there are no negative implications on their growth. Is it safe to take whey protein for over 65s? Absolutely, yes. Remember, whey protein is literally a byproduct of making cheese. So in milk, you have two main proteins, casein and whey. When we make milk, all of the casein is removed to make cheese, and the leftover whey, which was previously a waste product, by the way, is now used to make whey protein a really, really high quality protein. So it absolutely is safe. And if you're over 65, then I think getting more protein in your diet is a really, really good idea because as we get older, it's a lot easier to lose muscle. So you want to do everything you can to hold on to that muscle. And that includes lifting weights and eating more protein. How much should you be taking? It's difficult to say, but I would recommend for older people going for at least 40 grams of protein per meal, hopefully three, maybe four, maybe even five meals a day. Okay, if you want more information, check out my videos on the MyProtein YouTube channel.